All right, so in this video, what I wanted to show you is the Ferro Stream app. Ferro Stream is a useful app that allows you to watch your registration take place while data collection. Uh, the prerequisites are you need to have a Ferro Premium or newer scanner. Anything before Ferro Premium scanner will not allow you to use the app here. You also need to be connected uh, via Wi-Fi to your scanner or via the network that the scanner is connected to and equally your app that you're using um, on your hardware is. So in my case, I have an iPad with FerroStream running on it, but I, it, the easiest probably in the field, you have a direct connection between your scanner and the iPad or your stream app here. So let me go into the app. You can verify the connection by clicking the top right icon here. It shows you that I'm using a Ferro Premium Max scanner. I can run a quick compensation before I start the data collection, but that's not the purpose of the video today. There's a few settings that you can uh, run through in the app. You can log into your Sphere, Sphere XG account if you have one. I do have one, but I don't need to use it for your, my upload and download right now, so I'm not going to log in here. But I just wanted to show you that the settings that I'm using are the default settings. I'm not changing any of them. You can go crazy with changing your registration limits if you want, but typically I just use the defaults here. All right, so let's run through the app here. Hit plus to create an account or create an account, create a project. Let's do this stream. Stream and we'll call it 127. I usually take a photo for my thumbnail of my project just for fun so that I, you know, I remember where I was. If you don't want to output the location of your project, obviously don't hit the use current location. I am, so I hit it. I don't mind people knowing where uh, the actual scanning took place. If you have a description, type in the description. But ultimately, I created a project right now. Next, I'm present presented with a blank canvas, obviously. What I highly recommend is now clicking the scanning um, uh, item at the top over there and hitting the little triple dot next to stream, the name of your project, hitting the pencil, because what this allows you to do is inherit the name of the project into your scans. So I'm going to do that. If you don't, then there's just a genetic date and time. Uh, initial scan number one sounds correct. We'll hit save. We'll hit back. Let's do this. I am using the flash profile just to speed up the data collection for the sake of the video. Otherwise, it works with any of the profiles that you actually have here, even custom ones that you possibly have made. But let me hit play just to actually uh, start the data collection. This is where you would want to get out of the way and not be in your scan, preferably, right? I'm here next to the scanner just because of the sake of the video. A um, few things that you can change while scanning. Maximize your screen, obviously, hit the little gear thing at the bottom right, and instead of viewing just the three digits of the last three digits of your scan number, you can do the full name over here. You can see that it just changes the view there. I like the last three digits because I don't necessarily want to have, you know, my screen cluttered. If you have multiple scans, which we haven't yet, uh, captured, you will have scan connection lines. Those are new to uh, Ferro Stream 2024 and newer, which kind of show you uh, what the logical um, relationship between the scans was uh, when the stream app uh, downloaded the incoming data. So I'm, once again, I'm just scanning, position the scanner to the best of my abilities for the data capture that I'm after. And now I can see from the top a new outline of the incoming data, of course. You can see it from the top, you can see it from the side, you can see it from the front, just to see if there's different elevations there. From the top, we see that there's a line between the actual scans, indicating that the software was um, able to find a relationship between the scan positions, which is great. If you lose your connection between, hey, how the project should be rotated, there's the icon right below the cube, which resets it back to where zero is ultimately. All right, uh, let's move on. I will now pretend that uh, actually show you the best uh, use scenario for stream. When you make a mistake, when you're going into a space that isn't adjacent to where you've already scanned. So let's go make a mistake here. Okay, I placed the scanner 
into a new location which is the wrong location if you didn't have stream you wouldn't notice this thing but ultimately i'm going to show you how you find and how you fix an error so we're looking at the data being captured from the adjacent room here very little overlap between the project and the data that i've just captured and i know what i'm looking at is definitely wrong and you're now thinking oh my goodness what am i going to do with this thing so what i can do is i can now click or highlight the new scan that came in that's wrong i can unlock it and i can actually slide this and i know just by paying attention i know that it kind of belongs here this way right i'm not going to be very precise but i can be uh, i can just leave it here it already takes care of your error that otherwise you'd have to find out later. So when I'm clicking this and uh, I can just leave this space there by locking the little padlock that tells the software, hey, uh, the operator who looked at the scan signed off on the placement of this scan position already, meaning I am uh, not going to impose a registration on it. But now that you realize that you made a mistake, what you can do is uh, walk back and actually find your scan and scanner and move it back to the location which is useful for you, right? So I am now in the actual doorway here. So I'm going to hit play. And you'll see that the scanner will figure out the placement uh, based on obviously where we were before and where we're actually mm, scanning from right now. So we have scan number four happening behind us here. It was capable of actually figuring out its placement, but you can now also appreciate the fact that it did not do a good job either because we uh, weren't uh, successfully registering. So what I'll do is I'm going to unlock this guy and say, by the way, it belongs here because there were reflections. Well, try a better fit here. This is where I'm going to hit, instead of the little padlock button, I'm going to hit the little cloud icon with the lines and say, hey, maybe you fit better here. And what the software does is, if your uh, tolerance of placement is met, it'll give you a successful registration. In my case, it, it was met, but it's definitely in the wrong spot still. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to move it here and restrict the motion by going into the settings and saying, hey, I am not going to give you this much room to actually move. I'm just going to let you do maybe two feet of motion. So we'll hit back and I'm going to do try or fit here. And you see that I just fixed my problem. So rather than giving it 16 feet of tolerance to move the scan to uh, its incorrect position, like it was being put like here, I, only, I told it, hey, I already placed you well within your two feet of the tolerance. And in my settings, that tolerance is lower than the actual initial movement that I, uh, you know, invoked on the placement of the scan. Now what I can do is the second scan, even though it's in the correct position, let's try to see if it fits here. So now, now that we're here, I can actually hit this and we can hit the little cloud icon again. And what it does is it now calculated a successful link between the actual scans. So I can see and very quickly fix errors in the field. We'll do one more scan here just for the fun of it and hit play here. And there we go. So the scanner's now behind me. Once again, it should fall into space in the back of the room over here. And if it doesn't, that's what's nice. If it does not actually link to the proper space, what you can do is you can override it and you can even just leave it in this space. So right now I would be super happy with my registration. I could um, shut down the scanner and move on. But if I don't like this, I can now click it and I can say, you know what, maybe it's better here. Obviously it isn't better there, but I can just say, this is where I want it to be. And when you see the data coming into Ferro scene now, you will actually see all of the pre-placed scans in the top view. Uh, and you can analyze uh, on a computer that's got way more horsepower than the iPad or your phone that you're doing this on and actually take out the error. Now, obviously, 
if you know that it was working before I'm just going to do a slight misalignment over here and say hey I'm well within the two feet of where I want to be it will still actually click into place so there you go that's simple enough for using Ferro Stream. If you want to disconnect the actual scanner after a data collection, it's just a matter of turning it off. Or what I like to do is I actually touch the little scanning icon at the top and uncheck the scanner here that will release the scanner from being controlled by the app. And I can go ahead and actually shut down the app. All right. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below.